previously in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. The party, while exploring a miniature castle, stumbled upon a room with one of Halister's magic gates. Out from this gate came several drow that seemingly recognized the party, and indeed seemed to be looking for them. A battle erupted with drow fighters surging towards Bones, the first person into the chamber. But Bones was wearing the helm given to the party by the homunculus of the castle and could not be harmed. The tabaxi rogue attempted to feign wounds and pain, but his performance was seen through in short order. Consequently, the drow turned their attention to ashes. Early on in the battle, Ezra turned himself and Matashtai invisibly, invisible. But as the monk entered the room, it became apparent that at least two of the members of the drow party could still see him and track his movements for the other drow. The battle became more complicated as a mage amongst the Dark Elves created a translucent green wall, pinning Matashtai into a corner and blocking Ezra in the hall. Fortunately for Matashtai, he was close to a window sill slit and could just barely squeeze out and through to another um, to circumvent the wall. Bones used the last charge of his fireball necklace to thin out the drow while Ashes fought against the two elite warriors and house captain. The house captain had an odd way of fighting, whipping his allies and driving them and himself into a frenzy. Ashes was fighting valiantly, but was lose it was a losing proposition without the majority of his allies there to aid him. Ezra ended up casting a storm of ice into the chamber, further thinning the ranks of the drow and causing the mage to drop the green wall. Unfortunately, the mage just put it right back up, trapping Matashtai again, and this time putting Bones out of the fight as well. Now both the monk and rogue had to climb through the windows in order to circumvent the wall. Matashtai attempted to heal Ashes but was countered by the drow mage, and Ashes was finally felled by the house captain. Still, by this point, most of the drow had perished just in taking down the Bloodhunter. Seeing things begin to turn, the Dark Elf Mage went invisible, dropping the second wall of force. This gave Ezra the opening that he needed. The walls had been preventing him from using any magic that might pass through them, but now that they were gone, he unleashed a furious surge of lightning, outright killing three of the remaining drow and putting the house captain on death's door. The captain roared with fury, but touted that he would enjoy watching the party's flesh be flayed from their bones, giving the implication that he did not expect to die here. Bones quickly silenced him. Ashes, now up, tried to hunt down the mage, but was unsuccessful and was taken down by a lightning bolt out of nowhere. Ezra used more magic to shower the air around Bones with electricity, successfully pulling out the mage and allowing the party to finish him. In the aftermath of the battle, the party feared that the fairy dragon might be hiding nearby since Matashtai had had to turn off his lantern so that he and Ezra could remain invisible. They quickly reactivated the lantern, expecting to find the creature. Instead, they found a strange oracular orb watching them within the room. The party surmised that someone was scrying on them, and though they had assumptions on who, they had no way of knowing for certain. With Ashes quite wounded, the party debated about resting, but decided to heal up where they were and push onwards with exploring. Their investigations brought them to a strange metal chamber with a central console of levers and buttons marked courtyard, lights, heat, music, roof, hog, lockdown, and a button labeled do not press. The party, being inquisitive by nature, tested the lights, then the music in the fog. Then, Matashtai pressed the roof button, expecting perhaps the 
roof to unlock or open or something of that nature. Instead, there was a loud pop, and all of the party were immediately transported to the chilly roof of the castle, where, just inside the lantern's revealing light, flew the fairy dragon. The fight immediately broke out. Matashtai used his rope of climbing to attempt to lasso the dragon. He was somewhat effective and able to climb up onto the dragon's neck. Ezra then began to weave the arcane in such a way as to push the wind downward, hoping to ground the trickster. But the creature was able to knock Matashtai off and fly away from the downdraft. After failing to daze Ezra and Bones, the fairy dragon has disappeared once more. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.